Um, I do want to say a few things about, um, about sort of why social media and the internet in general are so effective for fake news to spread upon. And so, you know, one of the first things, right, is you know, this was what was going to sort of revolutionize the way that we understand, um, or, or sort of the way that the way that information is is provided. It was going to sort of democratize the media once we went to a social media environment where everyone became a publisher, and you could get points of view from all all over the place. Instead, people, of course, gravitate to their own points of view. You get in more and more specialization. You get these echo chambers. And you also get people being very careless relative to large publishers. And we're not as careful when we reshare a tweet as the New York Times is before they release a story. And, and, and that's natural. We can't be. But sometimes we're sort of um, you know, negligently careless about it. There's a really nice example. This was a study. Um, maybe you saw it or read it. Did anyone read this study? Anyone read this study? So, uh, so the study said 70% of Facebook users only read the headline of science stories before commenting. And um, it was a striking study. It was shared uh, almost 60,000 times. And it was a self-demonstrating uh, self study because it was the, the body of the study itself was just random Latin gibberish text. So, uh, and yet it got shared 60,000 times demonstrating the point that, well, we don't know that it's 70%, but it's a heck of a lot. Now, I mean, and, and we can all see ourselves doing that, you know, retweeting something on, on, on Twitter or, or whatever that we haven't read. Um, the problem is we even start to see this happening uh, on social media when highly reputable, responsible um, you know, print media and traditional media move into that space. So here's one just from the other day. Uh, this is a sort of kind of a little bit of a biology class. It says, in biology class, you learn that to be born male, animals need a Y chromosome. Any biologists find that disturbing? So, uh, so it turns out that that's only the case if you're a mammal or Drosophila or a few other weird insects. And the vast majority of animals don't have XY sex determination. Moreover, the first sentence of the article points this out. And yet this tweet goes out from the New York Times, which you'd expect to know what they were talking about, that's just scientific rubbish. So there's this huge discrepancy between what the New York Times is tweeting uh, and, the, and the quality of the content that's been carefully fact-checked in, uh, in their Science Times section, for example. And I think that just illustrates how, how, how far that problem extends and possibly the notion that the print media isn't taking the, uh, their internet voice very seriously. Um, this is a really important idea. This is an idea that Judith Donath from the MIT Media Lab has developed. It talks about why is it that we share things on the internet. Typically, you think when people are communicating, it's they're trying to tell you the thing that they're communicating. You know, so if I'm saying something about Hillary, I'm trying to tell you something about Hillary. But uh, Judith says it's actually often something quite different. She says, in the world of social media, of Facebook and Twitter, news is shared not just to inform or even persuade. It's used as a marker of identity a way to proclaim your affinity within a particular community. So I'm retweeting things to say something not about that thing, but rather about myself. So suppose I go on social media and I say, Trump is orange and stupid, lol, lol. lol. Um, that's not going to come as news to anybody. People are either, I don't mean that, people will either think, well, that's nonsense, he's great, um, and I know he's orange, or they'll think, um, or they'll think, you know, oh yeah, I knew he's orange and stupid. No one's going to be, that, there's no information content to this about Trump, right? But there is information content about me. I'm signaling something. I'm saying, me, I'm with all of you who think you're part of the resistance if I send, if, if I send a tweet like that. The thing about tweets like that, though, is they don't even have to be true to have that effect. I can tweet total nonsense and it still has that effect of signaling who I am and who I'm with. So maybe I tweet this. Um, huge huge cover-up, secret FBI files show Hillary had Scalia killed so she could take our guns. Okay. Um, if I tweet that, then I'm also signaling, you know, that's nonsense. You don't believe it even if, you, know, you probably don't believe it even if you tend to, to uh, you know, share my right-wing political beliefs in this, in this example. Um, I'm really saying me, I'm with all of you, make America great again people. And so what's happening is I'm sort of indifferent to the truth of what I'm tweeting 
because it's not really telling you about that thing. I'm telling you about me and what I stand for. And therefore, I'm willing to tweet pure Frankfurtian bullshit as a way of providing this sort of signal of, of who it is that I am. Um, and just as a final note, there's this distinction, there's this change as we've moved to an internet world in terms of how we access our media and what's the business model. So it used to be that we'd pay for subscriptions to uh, magazines. They, of course, also have huge, huge advertising revenues, right? Um, and, and, uh, but, but the advertising revenues were based on subscription numbers. So you'd, so you'd pay for subscriptions to, to a magazine or a newspaper, and the idea was that there you're paying for kind of a long-term relationship, if you will, with that media source where you get a chance to, to, to you know, get the next year of whatever it is that they have to say, and you're interested in their reputation, and you, wanna, you want them to be reliable and so forth. <laughs> Nowadays, an awful lot of the media that we consume are on the Internet, and, uh, and, and it's typically sort of click-driven, um, uh, it's sort of a click-driven business model, right? All they're trying to do is get you to click. And so instead of trying to provide, you know, really sober uh, stories with in-depth analysis, they're trying to just see what, what can I do that's going to trigger you to, to click this. There's something hidden behind, in the Hershey's logo, and it'll rock your world. Um, find out what percent introvert and extrovert you are by sweeping these office characters on Tinder, and so on and so on. These are, of course, not going to provide you with a, a detailed picture of anything about the world, but these are the sorts of things that we sort of indulge in the guilty pleasure of clicking and looking to see what's this, you know, I never would have expected what happened next. And, uh, and, and so that, that, that model of switching from, from subscriptions to clicks, I think, has really changed the, the, the way that, you know, what is rewarded uh, financially in terms of what media is provided. Mm -hmm.